Good morning. Um, as I promised, I'm going to do a, an end-to-end -end video. Um, you will be able to fast forward through it, all right? Otherwise, it'd be like watching paint dry, because um, it is a, a slow process, all right? But you won't be able to uh, forward it, and I'll put the links down below. So here's the stock as it is now. So the first thing we need to do is to cut it up into usable pieces. Because obviously at the moment, anybody that knows anything about these, all right, they've got various holes in uh, for the working um, for the working parts of the the rifle. So we just have to cut round them. It's it's not difficult, um, but it took me a couple to uh, to actually find out how to get it right. So I'm just going to do make the first cut, which is normally straight across. As you can see, obviously we've got the two holes there, but we've now got actual usable usable wood. So along this side here. This I've actually used for a couple of people. I mount them on and they use for a desk tidy. Um, I've sold a couple now and they seem to go down quite well. All right, so there's the first cut. I'm just gonna make the second. So there you go, that's going to be for the first piece. Now one thing I missed off the last one, I marked them with a number. Now this is 10, and the reason I marked them is the fact that um, I give out a little certificate of authenticity. So I know where I buy these from, so I know they're genuine 1944, so I give out a certificate to say that. All right, so as you can see there, there's a nice usable piece of wood there and if I'm careful there's another piece there as well all right you can see it better from that angle all right so on to the next process so I've cut through like that give myself for the tube I've given myself enough plage or end in case I get any um, wrong cuts at the end uh, which sometimes does happen, it splits away. It just gives you a little bit, and I can always cut it down before we uh, we start. So all I do now is drill it. So I've set my drill up. Um, obviously, I've selected me the correct size, but I've set it up. You know, it's this really sophisticated um, piece of kit, or well, a piece of three by three, um, with a straight line on it. Um, so I know that the drill is going to go straight through um, otherwise you might end up going too close to one side not being able to use the blank all right Now you will notice, obviously I've only got a small um, bench bench drill. So you notice that obviously I've not got enough travel on it to get all the way through. So again, using a very sophisticated couple of pieces of pallet, all right, it just now allows me then to get more travel.
right and then just take it off so there we are got plenty of probably too much there but it's better too much than too little all I'll do now is I'll trim that down a little bit on the band saw I won't do that on the video but I'll trim it down to make it easier to turn all right so I've just popped it on the band saw just got rid of all the, the really large edges and I'll take the rest off on the on the lathe next thing is to glue the two up so all I'll do is I'll take the tube rough it up just using a piece of paper um, and then glue it up again not going to do that on the video morning sorry all my glasses steamed up with a uh, steam from the uh, tea right almost ready to go I've just got to trim the ends up now like what you'll do um, and for those that have um, more observant amongst you um, yes I have a little bit less hair than yesterday obviously um, the super glue dried overnight generally you can actually use super glue within an hour um, I've got to be honest I only use Gorilla Glue um, you could probably see it behind now um, purely because I've had three returns out of what nearly 400 pens now um, and they were all ones that I didn't use um, Gorilla Glue with um, so I tend to stick with what I know um, and that works for me so I'm going to trim that up um, and I'll do that now see you in a bit so I'm just going to trim the edges off uh, use barrel trimmer um, they come in sets um, and basically you just choose the tightest one for the tube that you're going to use all right excuse me a minute So all we're doing now is making this nice and sure it's nice and flush on either end. All right, and now onto the lathe. So I have a sort of a routine. Um, I always sharpen um, the chisel I'm going to use um, every time. You notice I've changed my glasses. These are obviously safety specs, so high impact. Um, I do have other sort of safety equipment, but I don't wear it all the time. It's only as and when needed. I've also got sort of um, um, PP3 uh, respirator as well for when I'm turning um, certain woods and bone as well, because that absolutely stinks to my oven. But for this, we've mounted on here. We've now got the bushes. Um, they basically what I turn down to. And I've also got some sort of spaces in here, which allow me a little bit of space to work with the chisel. Um, I do prefer um, using the three quarter um, chisel purely because um, it's what I'm used to. I do use a skew chisel as well um, for sort of edging work, but I, I, I'm used to. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll crack on. You can see the lathe. Um, a lot of people have got these massive fancy lathes. Um, it's nearly 30 years old. Um, I rebuilt it when I was gifted it, um, redid the bearings and rewired it as well because the wiring is a bit old. Um, but touch wood, um, it served me well. Um, for those, I've got a, a little surprise coming later on in the year, but anybody that comes and um, does any sort of pen experiences with me will be using a new lathe. 
um, so but I'll cover that more later on so now to crack on The idea is that you try and get the best finish you can <coughs> excuse me before you start sanding um, so this is what I do all right um, I'll go through to the next step right so normally um, I have the dust extraction on um, but I won't otherwise you won't be able to hear anything at all so I'm just gonna wear a, a face mask Um, it doesn't take a lot of sanding if you've got a really good finish initially so hence why um, it's better to do the work with the chisel than sandpaper it's a lot quicker all right so that's really good so there's a couple of processes now I've got to do so I'll move on to the next stage so what I've done now is I've sort of changed over the original bushings which I um, turned down to I've taken off because they're made of steel um, and sometimes that comes off when you're sanding doing the final sand so I've replaced it with these little plastic bushings which are um, HDPE um, and they're pretty 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 cheap um, they don't last long to be honest um, so it gives you a better finish so what I'm gonna do now is the final a little bit of a sand uh, but before that, before I do the final sand, once you're happy, I put a sanding sealer on and that just, again, before I do my final sand, it just helps to uh, seal everything in. So give us a second and I'll pop it on. Right. You see my posh dispenser. Um, I, um, somebody asked me what products I use uh, for finishing, etc. And to be honest, um, when I got back into this a couple of years ago, um, my uh, guru, if you like, uh, Ron Caddy, from over in Andover, um, he actually only used chestnut products. So that, that's what I've used and stuck with. I've used a few different ones 
um, but I've always come back to them. They are a little bit more expensive, um, but they're worth it. They give you a really, really good finish. All right, so what we need to do now, excuse me, scrabbling around, just need to allow that to dry for a little bit. All right. So last little bit of sanding, which will be uh, 600 and then finish off with a 12. go it's now to apply the finishes so what I'm going to use first is a bit of melamine lacquer um, again literally is my new quantities little bit and do two or three uh, layers I normally do three but it literally is just a smidge <laughs> Just seals everything in nicely and then one final touch bit of wax now again this is about building up layers so small layers That's it, everything sealed in nicely. And now let it settle for a little bit. Um, I normally wait for an hour or so just to let it all settle down and then I do the assembly. I'll see you in a minute. So, got everything laid out. Hang on, just turn the music down. Um, so, got everything laid out. There's the blank ready to go. Now, um, I'm right-handed, so I tend to work um, that way round. Now, this is where it could all go wrong. All right, so you've got to be very, very careful what you do. Because when you're placing these inside here, sometimes they get caught. So, you know, it's homemade, but I find that you get better control than some of the shop-bought ones. And then all you're doing is pushing that in there. So, there you go. That's it going wrong. You can see that. So it's starting to go at an angle. So you need to straighten it up. There you go. Nice and gently. Tight, but not too tight. All right. Now, with the bullet end, 
if you push on that you're likely to break it so I have a very expensive jig that I've made funny enough called a gun jig and just place it on there so what I'm doing there is that all of the pressure is actually on the strongest piece of the pen or the pen nib all right so again sorry just got to concentrate a little bit so again tighten it up all the way and then pop it out of there so basically all of the pressure was on there not on that thin part last thing we've got to do is remove that place in the spring and just lower down now with these again just make sure that that springs all the way down and you notice it's all the way in but again one of the last things that can go wrong is you see how much that spring comes out so you've got to be nice and gentle so you don't twist it do it up and the final check so it's protruding out and does it work and does it go back and it does so there's the finished article so that's it finished um, that's the way I do it um, I'm not saying it's right there's loads of different ways to finish a pen off some people use super glue um, others use different materials uh, like car polish and, and things like that on acrylics and, and some people even use it on wood it's whatever works um, and one of my first customers with those um, was a, an ex-military friend of mine he's had it for um, about two years now he was part of my research group um, and he says he's had no problems with it and all he does is occasionally give it a bit of house polish so it works I hope you enjoyed it um, don't forget if you are uh, YouTube on YouTube hit the subscribe button for me um, even better um, hit the bell so um, there will be more videos coming um, the plan is uh, for one every fortnight so if you've got any ideas that you're looking for please feel free to uh, to give me a shout love to hear your comments um, good or bad you know and um, if you know a better way of doing things you know it's always great to learn and and as I put a post out the other day every day is a learning day um, and I love learning thank you very much I hope you enjoyed it a um, couple of people out there that specifically aimed at um, now to do the uh, the uh, boring part which is the editing try and um, make it watchable cheers guys thank you very much and have a great day.